In Democracy 2012 now, the race for the reshaped 14th Congressional District. Yesterday, we profiled Democratic Congressman Gary Peters, and now as part of our ongoing series on the candidates, we're featuring his Republican challenger, John Haller. 7 Action News reporter Anu Prakash has the story. John Haller was born and raised on Detroit's east side. He grew up in the manufacturing and automotive industries. I started working at my father's tool and die shop at the age of seven, sweeping floors. I became a die maker, then a certified program manager. I left the automotive industry, of course, because everything's going overseas to Asia. Right now, Haller is the director of new business development for Ace Electronics, which develops radio systems and electronics for the U.S. Army Tank and Automotive Command. Haller wants something done about trade laws. He says his father's company went out of business in the late 90s because of taxes, regulations, and everything being shipped overseas. He recalls why he wanted to get into politics. I worked for an international company, and I saw firsthand how it was happening. As long as the war comes out of the U.S. economy, their government subsidizes the loss. So if they take a job for a million dollars and they lose a half a million, the Japanese government would cut them a check for half a million dollars. At what point did you say? I'm as soon as I found that out, I flew home the next day. Mm -hmm. I worked for the company for one year. I found it out on a Friday night and flew home Saturday morning mm -hmm. and resigned. If you're not willing to actually go after the trade laws and these foreign countries that are stealing work out of our economy, we're kidding ourselves. I mean, we used to be the manufacturing capital of the world, and we're no longer that. China is. That's got to stop. If elected to Congress, Holler says his top priority is manufacturing jobs. We have to address these trade laws, and in Michigan, I think our taxes. We have to lower these taxes and attract people back to Michigan. People blame, well, it's the UAW, that's why all the jobs are leaving. That's not the case. If the case is they can't compete with, say, a person in Indonesia, which I've been to. A dye maker in Indonesia makes $600 a year. A dye maker here in the United States makes about 80000 a year. So you can't compete that unless we have a trade law that benefits the U.S. as opposed to benefiting these foreign countries. Another priority for Holler, the community. We have to get our churches and our local leaders involved with education, leaving it up to the parent to decide what school to go to. But if they need help, and I remember back in 1976, my father's tool and dye shop, the business was declining. And instead of going to get government assistance, we actually, my mom and myself and my little brother went to the church. And the church put their arms around us and helped us out until we got back on our feet. So we never went and got government assistance. We just persevered and worked through it. But community organizations and churches, they have to help these children today. Because look at the school systems. These kids have nowhere to go after school. They keep closing down all these centers, community centers, and where do the children have to go but to get involved in crime? I mean, the city of Detroit, you turn on the news, you know as well as I do. The murders, the rapes every day, and it has to stop. Holler also wants to address the debt. You hear $14 billion wasted on unemployment benefits. And if you remember two years ago, they needed $30 billion to extend these benefits. And $14 billion of it was wasted. So if you're ever going to tackle your deficit, you have to look at every dollar spent prior to being spent, not after the fact. So I think that has to be addressed. And once that addressed is addressed, I think you'll bring the deficit down without cutting anything, but just cutting fraud, waste, and abuse. Haller believes his experience with manufacturing gives him an edge, even against Congressman Gary Peters. You have a very stark contrast between me and Gary Peters. He doesn't actually understand the manufacturing industry. I do. And that's more important than anything we're facing today. I mean, yes, we have debt, but spending money is not the answer. The government's not the answer with money to fix the problem. Fix the environment. And if you fix the environment and you make it a friendly environment, companies are going to start reopening here. They're not going to go overseas. I mean, I've opened up four manufacturing plants, three of them here in Michigan, one of them in Ohio. Um, and the three in Michigan are still open. The one in Ohio uh, closed down for a short period, but then another corporation bought that plant that I opened up, and it's we're running today. And before voters go to the polls, Holler wants them to know this. I'm dedicated. I, I mean, I've stayed in the manufacturing business. I've had opportunities to go overseas to China, to Korea, and work for those, con those countries and those companies. But I'm dedicated to make Southeast Michigan the motor city capital of the world once again. And that, that's, that has to happen. And we can talk about reinventing Michigan. We can talk about all types of things. 
but we're built on manufacturing. That is our key. That's what our people are trained for. I mean, you can talk to anybody, I'm sure they know, you know or they know somebody that's worked in the automotive industry or is working in the automotive industry if they're lucky enough to have a job these days. A new Prakash, 7 Action News. Last night on Action News at 5, we presented a profile of Mr. Huller's opponent, Gary Peters. We will have both of our profiles on our webpage later tonight. You can go straight to WXYZ.com slash vote and you can see both pieces there. And